If you could only see how I am precariously perched. Welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 151. And like I said, if I do a somersault off the backwards here, please don't look as my skirt flips over my head because the chair I normally sit in is wedged behind the beds that are set up for where our company is coming. So I'm in my craft cave sitting on the guest bed and hoping I don't go right off the back. So anyway, we'll see how long I can stay stable. Some people would say I have never been stable, but we'll, we'll run with that and get started. So I have, I'm sitting on them, I have two finished dishcloths. And I know, yes, I said I didn't think I was making any more. This was one I showed last week I was part way done so I just finished it and then if you watched on Wednesday there was a tutorial for making the knitted dishcloths if you missed it I will put a little you can click the little eye it'll take you over to where that dishcloth tutorial is so I had to use I had to start making one for the tutorial so at that point I was like well I've already started it I might as well finish it so there it is so I have two. This is definitely the last two navy blue um, dishcloths I'm making. I do have to make a couple of black ones for my mom because her kitchen is black and white. So I do have a couple more to go there, but I'm done with the navy blue for right now. And some of you who are crocheters only said you wished the pattern was in crochet. So I'm going to play with that and see what happens. So, uh, yeah, we'll check that out. We'll see what happens. So before I get started, let me share with you what is going to be going on over the next couple of weeks. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to have guests staying upstairs here. So next Saturday, I will not be filming in my regular craft cave back here because there will be people staying here. So I have pre-recorded the disassembling of the tub of shame. Now, if you don't know what the tub of shame is, it's a Rubbermaid tub that lives in my closet, which is over there just off camera. Uh, if you saw my craft tour, you would see the tub of shame in the closet. The tub of shame, like I said, it's a, it's a plastic tub full of projects that didn't work out so well. The tub reached its limit, and I thought it's really time... I need to clean it out. Some of the things have been in there for years. Like like one item has been in there. I was knitting it when my granddaughter was born and she's 16. So yeah, it's time. So I actually don't have as much works in progress to show this time because I've spent the vast majority of the week ripping projects apart. So I did pre-record all of that and show you what was in the tub of shame I modeled it, which is really scary, but I modeled what I had made and why I was ripping it out. And then I show you what it looks like now that they are just back into balls of yarn. So that has been pre-recorded and that is going to be part of next Saturday's video, but we will still have the show and tell. We will still have the sales, all that type of stuff. I just won't be doing my finished objects or works in progress because I'll have no place to film. And I feel funny filming in front of people. Um, talking to a camera is kind of weird when there's other people watching you do it, which is why I do this upstairs with the door closed. So anyway, let me show you the couple of works in progress that I have done. This is my sweater, and I got only about a half an inch done this week. 
It's a, it doesn't look like it, but it's about five rows right here. So I only made about half of, half of an inch. And I was doing that during my, my lunch break at work the other day. So other than that, I haven't really knitted on it a whole lot at all. Now in my crochet section, I actually have made a little bit more progress. I am making a cardigan and it's knit, you knit the back, then you attach the, the front, you knit the front, or I'm saying knitting. You crochet the back and then you crochet the two front portions and then you attach the sleeves. So um, if you watch the show and tell in a few minutes, you will see that Pam finished hers. Um, me, not so much. I've got quite a ways to go, but I did get from, I think last week I was right around, I need to put a progress keeper on here, but I think it was right around in here last week, right there. So I've gone up through here. Like I said, I've got quite a ways to go because I'm only maybe 11 inches tall at this point. So yeah, I got a ways, but it's coming along. I mean, this is not going to be a long cardigan. It's going to be like just at the top of my hips. I need something that like covers me to the bottom of my hips, but I don't think I'm going to have that much yarn. So um, it's going to be to the top of my hips. So that is my two works in progress. Now let's check out what you guys have been making this week. Now, upcoming videos, uh, like I said, next Saturday will be, uh, the beginning part will be pre-recorded, uh, but Wednesday's video of this week will be the last in the spinning series. So it will be part three, which will show you how to, um, how I skein the yarn up, how I measure how much yardage I have, how I determine what the weight of the yarn is, 
uh, how I wash it afterwards, and how you actually, when I say skein it up, how it gets twisted together to form the little skein. Yeah. So uh, that will be in there. So some of you have asked um, how my daughter is doing. Uh, if you've been following the podcast for a while, two months ago, my daughter's house caught fire and they pretty much lost everything. They are actually doing very, very well at this point. They're in a rental house. It's huge. It's gorgeous. Um, they're going to be very spoiled going back to a house that's like half the size of the one they're renting because each of the kids are only sharing two to a room. Uh, my daughter has seven children. And so uh, the daughter is by herself and the six boys are only two in each room because the house has five bedrooms. So uh, she said, yeah, we're going to be a little spoiled because we're getting used to all of this space. But the house itself is coming along and they're hoping to be moved in by the end of November. So it's it's moving along really quickly. And you guys like when I tell funny stories. So this is not something I did, but I thought I would tell you a funny story. It involves my son. So Sometimes my daughter-in-law and my son watch this, but so if you do, sorry about this, Robert. Um, but it is a funny story related to fire, sort of. Thankfully, not full-blown fire, but. When my kids were still young, living at home, they were both, I think they were like 12 and 13 at the time. Um. The first thing my son had done, he was into pirates at the time, and as I was dusting his dresser, I realized he had carved quite an elaborate uh, three-masted ship right into the top of his dresser, which happened to be an antique because it was um, from the 1960s. It was my parents' furniture when they first got married. Yeah, and it was like a, the brand, I think, was Lane. I mean, it was good furniture. It was the... Um, Danish modern style, but uh, yeah, so it, it was a pretty good ship, but I was not really impressed with him that he had literally carved it into the top of the dresser. But uh, like I said, he was into the stories of pirates and all that type of thing. So my daughter comes to me, we're getting ready to go to the dentist office because my son wore braces at the time. And she says, Mom, I just came out of Robert's room and I smelled smoke or something burning in there. Um, he said that he put it out. And I went, oh, okay, let me go find out what's going on. So I go upstairs and I open up the bedroom door. There's my son. And I can smell, there's this haze in the room and I can smell paper had burned. And it's like, uh, what's up? What have you been doing? His remark was, well, you know, I, I set some paper down and I took my glasses off and they were sitting on the windowsill and I guess the sun shone right through them just at the right angle. It caught the paper on fire. I was like, um, that's a really great story, but we all know that you're not telling the truth. Now tell me the truth of what really happened. So it turns out he had made a pirate map and decided that it needed to look aged around the edges. So he used a magnifying glass and the sun to try to burn the edges of the paper, and it burned a little faster than what he thought. So then he threw it on the floor so he could stomp it out, except that we had nylon-based carpeting, so it proceeded to melt the carpeting. So he got it out from there, and then he wadded it up into a ball and hid it behind the dresser where it proceeded to melt all the electrical wiring that went to his desktop computer and his bedroom light. Yeah, I was not a happy mommy at that point because all I could think is had we gone off to the dentist office, the whole house could have caught fire because apparently it was still hot enough to be smoldering in the back. Um, I was so angry. I was like, I can't even punish you at this point. Just wait till your father gets home and deals with it. I said, he's going to be very upset with you. Dave actually was laughing. I had to warn him ahead of time. I said, no, don't kill your son when I tell you what he did today. I told him what he did, and he starts laughing. I was like, what is so funny? He goes, I was a boy one time, too, and I I did stuff like that, too. I was like, well, don't share that with him. So, uh, yeah, that's our funny story this week. Well, 
yeah, at my son's expense. But anyway, yeah, so lesson learned. Do not take off your glasses, stick them in a windowsill, and try to get anyone to believe that the magnification from them must have started a fire on some paper. Yeah, it was a creative, he was very creative in his stories, yes. So anyway, um, now he tells stories for a living um, at an outdoor education place. So yeah, I guess it, it served him well. Yeah, anyway, now it's time for our... Now in our Come and Get It section today, this is going to be a really short podcast. Um, in our Come and Get It section today, we'll start with Annie's. And Annie's has their new autumn collection. It has been released. It's all crochet patterns, uh, but go over and check it out. Um, so they have, I mean, I was going to show some of the pictures, but I really liked a lot of them that were there, so I couldn't really pick one that I liked. There was a long sweater in there, but for me it would take, like, huge amounts of yarn, so that's not what I'm going to make. Um but, uh, yeah, there's some pretty patterns over there. There's some afghans. There's some sweaters. There's all kinds of stuff. Really pretty. So, again, that's the autumn collection over at Annie's. Um, then there is in the knitting section. Well, actually, it's not just knitting. It's knitting, crochet, and sewing. Annie's has a magazine that they put out, and this was their Christmas special edition from last year, from 2018. So so it has patterns for all different types of crafts and things. They are actually marking that on sale right now for $5.99. Um, and it is a download pattern. Uh, download, it's like a magazine, so it would be a download e-zine is what I think they call it. Uh, so you could do that and check out all kinds of patterns for both knitting, crochet, and there is some sewing as well. But it's all Christmas related. Blueprint is, because it's the summer is officially getting ready to end, um, they are offering 50% off of their cotton crochet kits. Now, I didn't see anything over in the knitting that they were offering other than in their clearance section, but in the crochet section, their cotton crochet kits are all on sale right now. You do not you need a coupon code. They've already marked them 50% down. So if you want to Jump on that one, and when it's a kit, it means it is the yarn and the pattern. So, yeah, so I, I went over and looked as well, and they have some very reasonable prices over there when they're on sale. So, yeah, you can get the pattern, which, of course, you can reuse numerous times, but you get the yarn, too. So that is Blueprint. Dollar Store is still running their Premier Cotton, or Premier Home Cotton Yarn, which is, you know, what you use to make dishcloths and things like that. Uh, they have Puppy Tails, which is a fluffy, fuzzy, thick, bulky, like super bulky yarn. And they also have Red Heart Unforgettable. Now, don't forget you have to buy the entire case. So that could be anywhere from 6 to 54 skeins. So make sure you read it carefully before you buy anything. But otherwise, it's a good deal. It's only a dollar per skein. So even if you get 54 and then and then pass some around as Christmas gifts or whatever. You could have matching outfits for everybody in your family for Christmas with 54 skeins of yarn. There you go. Everybody, their cousins, their brothers, their second cousins once removed, everyone could have matching hats for a family photo. Yes, you can thank me for that thought later. Consumer Crafts. Can you tell I need caffeine? Consumer Crafts is offering their sugar and cream. Um, that is what my dishcloths are made out of, is Lily's sugar and cream, and I bought it from Consumer Crafts. It is regularly $1.97. Uh, earlier this week, they ran a flash sale where you could get an additional 25% off. So I don't know if anybody took advantage of that, but even at the $1.97, that is cheaper than the regular stores. I think they're over $2 for it. So um, if you're buying a, a good bit of it, like what I did, um, it made sense to get it at that rate. Even the shipping, figuring in, it was cheaper than going to the store and buying it. Over at Creative, um, over at Create for Less, there are Red Heart Super Saver, which is a worsted weight. It's 236 yards, and it's on sale for $4.59. So that is Create for Less. Hobium Yarn, of course, has their Yarn of the Month, uh, or Stars of the Month, which 
the one I've been drooling over for the last two weeks, and you all know it because I think I've shown it every single time. So I'm not going to show it this way this time. Part of me, I feel like there's there's you know, the angel and the devil on the shoulders, one's going, buy it, buy it, buy it. And the other one's going, you don't need any more yarn. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to resist because, as you can see, I do not need any more yarn. But it's so pretty. It's, uh, in case you haven't seen what it is, um, you can click any of the links to the sales I'm talking about. You can click the link down below uh, for that particular store or site, and it will take you right over to it. But uh, in the stars of the month, they are selling three skeins of yarn, and each skein is over 200 yards. And it is, um, it's like a solid and a white and then a variegated that has the white and the other color in it. So it might be a solid purple, a variegated purple, and then a white. So they all blend together, and they had them in red, they had them in blue, they had them in tan, pink a really pretty teal, which was calling my name, and a green. Did I already say green? Yeah, I don't know. They had lots of colors. You name it, they had tons of colors. They were really pretty, and I think they're like a sport weight. I think it's a sport weight. I'm not sure about the weight of it. But anyway, um, yeah, they're really, really pretty, and I'm trying to resist buying any. But that's over at Hopium Yarn, but they also have a clearance section, and like I said, their Stars of the Month is always discounted as well. And I think that whole pack of three yarns is $7.57. It's something like that. I'll put it somewhere around here, exactly what the price is. Ice Yarn always has their uh, Tuesday sale, which you can go over and check it out on Tuesdays. But they also have a garage sale and a closeout sale, which is where you're going to find your cheapest yarns, and you can shop by weight or anything else if you want to to find it. Um, there is a lot of yarn. I'd say out of all of the different um, sites that I advertise for, I would say Ice Yarns offers the most yarn. They have a huge selection. It can be a little overwhelming, but if you shop like I do and look for the cheapest stuff, you're, you'll be fine. Um, knit crates, you can get 20% off of your first subscription box. You do need to use a coupon code KCREATIONS20. Knit Picks, their yarn of the month is 20% off, and that is all of their alpaca yarns. So if you want something warm, soft, and cozy, but it is not heavyweight, alpaca is a really good option. It's one of the softest fibers on earth. Um, I think there's a few that are softer than it, but alpaca's right up there with one of the softest. So they are offering all of their alpaca yarns at 20% off. You do not need a coupon code to get that. They also are offering a um, sweater, sweater weather. I think that's what they're calling sales, sweater weather. You do need to buy 10 or more skeins of the select skeins they have in that grouping you do need to buy more, at least 10 or more skeins, and they have to be the same yarn, same color. So in other words, you're using them for a sweater. Uh, but you can get 10% off if you do that. And you do need a coupon code to get that, and it is sweater10. And I will put that somewhere, probably here, because I'm wearing black, so it'll show up across me. So, And this is kind of a busy background, so most of my captions are probably showing up on my chest. <laughs> Um, I try to pick a solid background so that the the colors and the, the wording shows up well. But when it's a busy background like this, it's more difficult to find. So Leisure Arts. Leisure Arts has, I really liked this book. It's called Easy Essential Bags. There are 10 different bags in it, and they are all, um, I'm trying to remember. I think they're, they're they are crocheted. They are crocheted, and there are 10 different essential bags in there. They also have, because I'm a, I'm a pocketbook person, I love tote bags. That's my favorite type style of pocketbook are totes. Most every pocketbook I have, other than one I take when we go traveling, all of them are totes. Because I can throw everything in there, including whatever knitting or crochet pattern I'm working on. Um, my lunch, a water bottle, and you know, whatever I normally need to carry with me. So, yes, I am a pocketbookaholic, I guess you would call me. 
So I am attracted to anything knitted or crocheted that is a tote bag. So that is Easy Essential Bags. It's $7.99 for 10 different bags. Then they also are offering Terrific Totes, which is a download. It's $9.99. And there are eight patterns in that. So it's a little over a dollar per pattern. Um, then they have in the knitting section, I could not find knitting bags, which was really odd. I thought I would find some tote bags that were knitted. Couldn't find one. There is one on the cover of this particular book, and it's called The Best of Knit Accessories. It is $9.99 as well. Um, but... Yeah, I was kind of surprised. I figured there would be some knitted projects, but none that I could see. Now, we're la our last one is Lion Brand, and they are running a sale. It's buy two skeins, get a third skein for free. Now, you do need to use the same yarn and the same color, but if you buy two of them, you can get the third one for free. You do need to use a coupon code. It is yarn B2G1 buy to get one. So um, I'll put it probably up here again so you can read it. Uh, so anyway, those are our sales for this week. There will be a Knit Crate unboxing at some point. I'm thinking Monday probably. It's due in um, fri Friday, but with company, I'm going to have to film it in my bedroom. So I hope the lighting's okay. I've never filmed. You guys are going to get to see my house in all different angles during this time when we have people staying with us. So, so far, you've seen my kitchen. You've seen the bedroom. You've seen all over the craft cave. And you'll get to see our bedroom, or at least a part of it. Not the messy part. You'll get to see the part where the chair's at. Um, so anyway, I will be unboxing that. And so that video should be up, I'm thinking, on Monday. And then Wednesday, we will have the spinning tutorial to finish out that series. So that should be the videos for this week until next Saturday. So um, another thing I wanted to clear, clear up with you, because apparently I was announcing the upcoming Potiversary and all of the giveaways I was going to do, and I said September instead of October. It's starting in October. My third Potiversary anniversary is actually October 22nd which is my son-in-law's birthday and a day before my daughter's birthday. Their birthdays are one day apart, but they're a year apart. He's a year older than she is. Uh, but anyway, October 22nd is my anniversary date for podcasting. So as a result, every week in October, we will be doing a giveaway. And uh, there, there's all kinds of things. There will be some skeins of yarn, and there will be some pattern books. and. Yeah, I think it will be fun. So make sure you tune in. Uh, if you are not already a subscriber, please click that little subs subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell icon next to it, that will let you know anytime I post a video, which is normally Saturday and Wednesday, but sometimes I throw other things in. Or if I run across a really good sale, I want to share it with you guys, so I will stick it um, out here for you all to see, or I'll stick it over on the Facebook page as well um, to let you know of any good things, because we all like to enable each other, which is probably a good thing that we don't live close by, because we would go on giant shopping sprees. Yes, emptying out half of a yarn shop. I'm sure the owners would enjoy that, but uh, and we would have fun, but our pocketbooks probably wouldn't. Yeah, anyway. I, go, I need to go get some caffeine. So I am going to say goodbye today, and I will see you again on Monday and Wednesday of this week, and then again on next Saturday. So thanks again for watching, everybody. Have a great week.